Now we're going to look at hadrons, baryons, mesons, and gauge bosons. First, we're going to look at hadrons, baryons, and mesons. Now, these are basically quarks, but come in different combinations. Hadrons, these are basically heavy particles, which means they're not leptons, because that means light particle. And these heavy particles are combinations of quarks. For example, proton, uh, which is uh, an up and up and down quark. A meson, which is an anti-up and a down quark, for example. Now they come into two groups, baryons. These are combinations of three quarks. For example, the proton or the neutron, which is an up, down, down, three quarks. Each quark, by the way, has a baryon number of one third. So when you add one third plus one third plus one third, you get one. So a neutron has a baryon number of one. A meson, however, is a combination of two quarks. One will be a quark and one will be an antiquark. Now an antiquark has a baryon number of negative one third. So when you add the quark, which is one third plus negative one third, you end up with a baryon number of zero. So a meson is not a baryon. So hadrons are divided into two groups, baryons with three quarks, mesons with a quark and antiquark. This is a graphical way of looking at it. These are all hadrons. The ones on the left are quark and antiquark. The ones on the right are, for example, quark, quark, quark. Or it could be antiquark, antiquark, antiquark. It could be any combination of these. So these heavy particles, these hadrons, which are not leptons, and uh, the combinations of quarks. Now we'll look a bit more detail at baryons. The combination of three quarks, for example, a neutron, and here we have a table of different baryons, or antibaryons as well. Notice there are three quarks. The proton, for example, has up, up, down, three quarks. That is a baryon. An antiproton is anti-up, anti-up, anti-down, three quarks. A neutron is up, down, down, three quarks. So you can see the pattern. Three quarks, and it's a baryon. Or it could be three antiquarks, then it would be an anti baryon. Mesons are a combination of two quarks, which is basically a quark and an antiquark. And here we have a table of mesons. Notice it's always a quark and an antiquark. So, for example, a pi plus is called, also called a pion, is an up anti down. A k on, k minus, is a a strained and a anti up. A rho plus is an up and anti down, and so on. The B0 is a down and anti bottom. E to C is a charm and anti charm. Now you need to know about confinement. One thing you notice is that quarks are always in pairs or in threes. No one has ever detected a free quark. Now quarks never exist alone, only in other particles, such as baryons and mesons. And this is called quark confinement. Why is this? The force between quarks is incredibly strong. The force is basically constant and does not drop off with distance. So as two quarks are separated, the energy transferred needed to pull them apart gets bigger and bigger, because the work done is force times distance. So eventually, the energy becomes so great that that energy can be used to create another quark using Einstein's equation, E is equal to mc squared. So you would get another uh, quark or an antiquark, no, or so you would get a, a, a meson. An exercise for you. This is the table from the textbook. Let's look at this pi minus, which is down anti up. This pi minus, what is its charge and its baryon number? Well, you can see that the charge is d, so it's going to be um, negative one third, and anti up, and up is a third, uh, up is two thirds, so an anti up is going to be negative two thirds, 
So it's going to be negative 1. What is the barrier number? Well, this is going to be a third. That's going to be negative third, so that will be 0. So the charge will be minus the third plus minus two thirds is negative 1. The baryon number will be equal to 0. In other words, it is not a baryon. Let's look at another one. This is called a delta plus plus. Find the charge and the baryon number. So we have up, up, up. This is going to be, the charge will be um, two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds, which will be two. The baryon number will be one third plus one third plus one third, which will be one. So this will be a baryon. Gauge bosons. Now gauge bosons are the particles which mediate the fundamental forces that we've seen already. Whenever an interaction takes place, an exchange particle is either emitted or absorbed. The type of particle absorbed determines the type of interaction. For example, if it's a photon, then that's an electromagnetic force. Now, leptons can only interact with leptons in the same generation. So, in other words, electrons and electron neutrinos. You can't get an electron interacting with a tau neutrino, for example. And quarks can only interact with quarks in the same generation. So, in other words, up-down, or top-bottom, or strange charm. Or they can interact with strange and charm. For example, an up can interact with a strange, but it can't interact with a top. And here we have a table of the gauge bosons. The gauge bosons are the gluon, which, um, which mediates the strong force, and it affects quarks and hadrons, and it's got a very short time of interaction. The photon is the electromagnetic force, and it affects any charged particles, but the distance is infinite, and the time for the interaction depends on the distance, so that could be infinite as well. Now the W minus, the W plus, and the Z zero are weak force mediators. They affect quarks and leptons. And by the way, these are responsible for beta decay. And they have a fairly long time, which is 10 to the negative 10 seconds, which is still much longer time than 10 to the negative 20 seconds. Now, all these things considered, we have this standard model, which is basically looked up, look, made of quarks and leptons and these gauge bosons. So quarks, we have six there, up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom, and they're anti-quarks. And these form always to in uh, hadrons, in other words, baryons or mesons. Then we have these leptons, which are these light particles, which is the electron, and the electron neutrino, the muon, the muon neutrino, the tau, the tau neutrino. So the leptons. Then we have this third group, which is basically the force carriers, these gauge bosons, and they're the gluon for the strong force, the photon for the electromagnetic force, the Z boson, and the W boson for the uh, weak force. And the picture is almost complete with this standard model and in fact we have discovered that there is another boson which is called the Higgs boson and this completes the picture as we know it.